Okay, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to another of our Teleworks, TeleArtworks online lectures. Before we begin, I'd like to give you some information about the Atelier at Flower Field, a 501c3 not-for-profit organization. Our summer one session has just started and uh, classes um, are open for registration for summer two now. So if you wish to sign up for the next session, you're welcome to. Um, the website is atelierflowerfield.org. We offer a variety of fine art drawing and painting classes in a variety of mediums, both online and in studio. We also offer classes in illustration and digital painting as well, and have created a group of portfolio prep classes for students wishing to apply to art schools. We also have a variety of paintings on sale in our online art shop. Details can be found on our website. Our current exhibition is the uh, Emerging Artists, and that finishes on July 22nd, 27th, I beg your pardon. The next exhibition is our annual Masterworks exhibition showcasing works by our atelier instructors. And the opening reception will be on August 10th from 5.30 to 7.30. The gallery is open nine to five, Monday through Saturday. Tonight, new instructor Jenny Kim is presenting a digital demonstration on the fundamentals of character design. We welcome her this evening and hope you enjoy tonight's demo. If you wish to ask questions, please post them in the chat room. And I shall now hand over to Jenny. So, um, first and foremost, thanks so much for giving me this opportunity to come here and take over this webinar for character design and just kind of fundamentals for it. So let's see, I'll start sharing my screen. Let me move some stuff out of the way. And then hopefully you guys should be able to see it. All right, so I basically compiled a bunch of references for good references for character design um, and also brought us some really popular pop culture figures and characters that have this iconic silhouette and I just want to talk about briefly before I get into my pre-recorded video about of my drawing it's basically the understanding of shape and silhouette I think when it comes to character design depending on what kind of story you're telling each character design has a lot of ability to tell a story before even having any written down dialogue or monologue. And we can see with basic silhouettes, like iconic figures like Mickey Mouse or like the Mr. Incredibles guy, color palettes and shape have a lot to do with kind of, what is it like eternalizing these figures especially in cartoons, like in like childhood cartoons. And so I got some references for art and good examples of just like design. I think you can go a lot of ways when it comes to character design too. Again, it depends on whether you have a more fantastical story that you wanna kind of convey through your characters or a more structural and like, how do I put it, like modern? where they're wearing like normal clothing and it's not armor or like cyberpunky. But even in just normal clothing, you can have different layers to it. Like depending on cultures, um, you can also have so much room playing with different variations of just aesthetics from like different cultures again, without it being cultural appropriation. It can be more like, how do I say, like cultural appreciation by having homages and like references to these kind of cultures. So in these, I just had these pulled up because sketches like these have good silhouettes and shapes and just design thought into them. Um, and it's not too complicated. The colors are really like vibrant and flat. I really like this artist. Uh, they have really good just textures in their drawings and a lot of variety when it comes to like just more like cyberpunk clothes and modern clothes to even like fantastical armor uh, and themes like this. So I'm gonna pull up my pre-recorded drawing. I have 
This goes through like two drawings basically in the beginning where I'm just trying to block out basic ideas. And then let's see. The first one here is more so me trying to get a basic person down for like a more edgy kind of feel. I had a reference pulled up of a person in this like kind of pose and these kind of clothes. But yeah, this is my process. For me, I like to draw guys typically more. For me, I feel like I could have more, I could play around with more easier like harsh angles and shapes. Uh, so I just, it kind of gets me in the flow of drawing. And then once I'm comfortable, then I can kind of practice drawing like more dynamic poses. And usually I have fun drawing like women in that kind of flow. So here, because I was looking at a reference, I didn't really block in shapes. It was more so just getting the basic, sh like what is it, shadows down for me, because I just like drawing details, especially when it comes to like people's face. So I was just having like a lot of fun getting the details down here first. And for sketches like these, I try to start, it's hard to be put in exact words, but I try to start from bigger shapes to littler shapes. And usually if I'm painting, I guess, I block in colors first and then go into the details. Here, again, I'm just really comfortable drawing faces. So I just kind of had the details down first and then I clean it up later. But for this design, it was less about, what is it like, a silhouette for me as it was for my focus in like its details and kind of accessories on the character and the man I'm drawing here. Cause the shape, like if, if I just block it all out, it's just like a normal shadow of a person. But I wanted to focus more on the details Do you have a preferred brush in Clip Studio you use when sketching? Um, it really depends on my mood, to be honest. Uh, sometimes I kind of like lie to myself that I like one brush because like I want to use more or I want to have more textures in my painting. But I think right now, currently, I like like it's like the Photoshop brown brush almost, which is the one I'm using here because it has a blurred um, soft edge when I use it. So it kind of like, it doesn't blend really easy like the watercolor brushes or like other painting brushes, but it still blends. But for me, I like harsher edges in like my shading painting style. And it also forces me to like not get overly shady, if that makes sense. Like I, it doesn't make it too blurry and it kind of forces me in like, a more limited box. And I feel like I do better if I'm like forced with one kind of texture. So for this drawing specifically, I basically used only the the round brush, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I'm trying to practice more with like the G pen kind of brush where it's just like a harsh edge, like no blending at all. So I can practice having more confidence in like putting down flatter colors, but I do like the round brush more. And then yeah, on this part, I actually drew on the wrong layers. So I had to like zoom in really close and like erase the guidelines. I think when I was thinking of this design, I just wanted, again, a more edgier kind of 
punk looking guy character. So I focus again accessories and details. So like when I think edgy person, I was thinking like piercings, accessories, dark colors for like clothing. It's like a leather jacket, just dark stuff. <laughs> What other artists do you think have influenced how you approach character design the most? Um, I follow a ton of digital artists, but when I think like traditional artists, I think Kim Jong Gi, rest in peace. Uh, he's this like Korean artist who uses like pens and brush pens and has like incredible memory. And because like he he drew drew so much, he just has like. An amazing inventory of just ideas and like clothing and just machines, buildings, like perspective. His perspective is like really incredible. So I watched his like lives a lot, and he would just with no sketch just draw crazy like fish eye point of view scales of like life sized drawings of really lively. Uh, drawings whether it was like a lot of people like a lot of them had like kind of crude themes to it but his drawings I think really got me into just designing different characters and having fun drawing people in general in different perspectives and different styles um personally I don't know how he did it um some other artists I think Digitally, it's like there's this one artist named Reno Tuna, uh, very popular, and they have like a collection of really pretty like inanimate objects where they recreate it into like a person. Like they have these like references with like a Coca Cola can, and then they would turn it into a person, and you kind of see like themes of that uh, remaining in their image. I have a reference. While I quickly pause and just show, oh, let me get my. There you go. So Reno Tuna is this person. Yeah, they just get an image, their reference image, and then kind of manipulate it into their own really creative character without losing that identity and essence of the image that they're referring to, which I think is so cool. Um, personally, it's like a lot of creativity is in this because I think I would just be a little too basic with my ideas as opposed to like their kind of new creation where it's like this hospitalized koala looking person. Another artist I really like that does a similar thing is this like Korean artist, um, KSK or like in their YouTube channel, it's like hee hee, which is like Korean letters. Um, they do a really good job uh, in a kind of different style. Um, but yeah, those artists are like my favorites right now at the moment. And I think it helps because like the YouTube videos, like I just have them on all the time. But they do a really good job of like. Having that balance of realism, but also their own styles into their character designs or just designs in general, without having it kind of be too much, like too too many details or not enough. If that makes sense. And they have like a lot of storytelling through their designs, especially in Reno Tunas, because um, there's like a lot of props and items that. They draw with these characters that I think brings them to life a little more.
I think what's hard though is like when designing characters, storytelling through them is difficult. And like I try to think of like backgrounds for them, like literal landscapes and kind of settings. But it's kind of difficult when like I'm either limited in my head, at least for my own personal difficulties, like just like medieval times or like a futuristic city. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to broaden that. And it's also difficult to like have a concept in your head and kind of bring that to life, which is why, again, like I respect these artists that I mentioned beforehand so much because of their abilities to in reinterpret those iconic designs or recognizable designs into another recognizable design with it also being original, if that makes sense. I think I wanted to add like more accessories to his neck, but again, I didn't want too much. I would have done more drafts. Usually when I do like a specific like original character or anything, um, I do a lot of drafts of that one single character in different poses and different looks uh, with images that I'm using to kind of inspire that drawing and design like next to it, like a like a mood board almost. But for this one, uh, it was a pretty basic design. And for the sake of like the webinar, I just wanted like a clean, uh, just like illustration. Which is also why I did it just in grayscale. I remember blocking this jacket in and I was like, why am I making this more difficult for myself? And I could just like select with a lasso and then just fill it in. Sometimes it's therapeutic, I guess, if by like brushing it in, but I was like, oh my gosh, I'm taking so long. Digital art is like really convenient that way because I get to save so much time in these drawings. Silhouette constraints while designing characters more rooted in reality in comparison to more exaggerated designs like in Pixar. No, you're good. Um, yeah, there definitely are a lot more silhouette constraints when it comes to designing characters more rooted in reality. I think part of that is because of the stylization when it comes to drawing like cartoon characters like Disney and Pixar, where if it's more rooted in reality, people who don't even draw have an idea of what proportions and normalcy looks like in like person silhouettes. So the most you can do in drawing more rooted designs and like realistic designs, let's say, it's a lot, it has a lot to do with fashion and the silhouette of fashion, which is fun to play with, but definitely more difficult because at least in cartoons, you have the flexibility to like do really anything because I feel like anatomy doesn't limit uh, these cartoon or really stylized drawings 
in the way that realism does um because there's kind of a set of logic there whereas cartoons like mr incredible can have like tiny little baby feet but also like enormously broad shoulders so like his silhouette is like almost like that of like a dorito chip but very recognizable like spongebob has his iconic sponge shape without compromising anything because again it's like a different world uh, a different style and a sponge that's alive so when it comes to like realism again it's really like fashion and armor or clothes that you put on these characters and like their physicality that you can kind of play with you can be like realistic but still have dynamic like even poses I feel like the way someone carries themselves like even if they're standing um whatever poses that they have or are comfortable in let's say like their default standing position can have a lot of attitude that portrays the way they carry themselves so silhouettes may look really similar or like even sometimes unidentifiable like this one I'm drawing here if I just again blocked it out it's like a normal person but again, like, I could have played more with hats or, again, layerings of clothes, um, textures on his jacket, things like that. But yeah, it definitely is a lot more fun, I think, when it comes to designing, like, fantastical things or, like, stylistic things because you have that almost library, like, infinite library like you can really do anything. Um, are there elements in your illustrations that you like to include in terms of your own stylistic approach? Elements in my illustrations. Um, definitely, I think I, I definitely did start with drawing more realistically. Like, I started drawing with a lot of pencil, like, graphite and, like, charcoal, even when I started my interest in illustrations. But then I had grown a lot of interest in, like, anime or just, like, graphic novels and started following a lot more digital artists with a lot of these, like, kind of styles in their painting. And I was like, oh, like, I didn't know you could kind of have that realism in your drawings with it also being stylized so I definitely struggled a lot because having like harsh edges to my drawings was like I didn't know how to balance it with like I was like oh if I'm shading how can I have this hard edge here um but I definitely owe it a lot to like anime to be honest or like even like Korean webtoons that I read uh, and specific, specifically Korean artists uh, from their digital work that I look at have a lot of these kind of styles and I definitely like ate that up and absorbed it and kind of like it's definitely present in my drawings because I just really like the style in general so I guess I imitated it like that But I think it helps because starting in that kind of realistic genre of drawing helped me understand like anatomy more and just like lighting and shapes. Because like the extent you'll see of like intricate lighting and in like anime or something will be like little triangles of like white <laughs> on like really harsh uh, edges which also again I use both like harsh edges and shading I think I wanted a more like leathery kind of texture on this jacket. Kind of ended up more like thick flannelly. Excuse me. Sorry, he loves attention. But uh, 
Yeah, it was, it's a difficult balance. <laughs> Let me sit down, down, me down, good boy. Um, don't know what I was saying, but yeah. <laughs> Here, I'm just getting like basic shadows down. And then I'll like start adding in mid-tones and highlights later on. Sometimes to practice character designs too, with like the ability to have more stylistic approaches to it, I just like to do like straight up just blocking out a shape with just like black to see if I can get like an interesting shape to it without literally any details. And then using that silhouette, I can like lighten it and then like draw the details and whatnot. Jenny, do you do all your digital work in Photoshop exclusively or do you use any other programs? Um, I use Clip Studio Pro uh, exclusively. I, when I started, I used to use like free drawing programs um, because they're free, but I've been using Clip Studio for like a year, I don't know, not a year, like two or three years now. Um, and it's really nice because like the rendering process is really easy. I can record my drawing processes, but like it's limited to like 15 seconds or like 30 seconds. So it's like really fast. Um, there's just a lot more like tools I can use to render. So Clip Studio has been really nice. Cause I think for Photoshop, you have to pay monthly, but Clip yeah. Studio is just like a one-time fee. But I think recently they changed it in like an update in Clip Studio version two, where it's like a monthly subscription, but I think that's like if you update it to number two. So like cost wise and like tool wise, Clip Studio is really nice. Cause I think Clip Studio Paint Pro X also is like an animation version of it. So there's like a lot you can do. Cause like it has 3D models, brushes, all of that sorts. Hmm. So this is Clip Studio then? Yeah. Mm. I think it's pretty similar to Photoshop because like even when there's like artists who make brush packs, like digital brush packs for Photoshop, you could usually use them like one to one for mm -hmm. Clip Studio, which is really nice. That's good. Explain a bit more about how shape language can cue the audience into a character's personality in addition. That's a great question, actually. Um, yeah, shape language, I just think of it very simply. When it comes to sharper edges um, in the silhouette of a character, shape, shadow of a character, you can have, I kind of equate that to a sharper personality um, with more rounder and softer edges. Again, that's like a more rounder and softer personality. Um, I think it's just like descriptive words like that when it translates into drawing just also describes a character well if I can describe a character with like one word for a shape and then like one personality trait like sharp edges I don't know like even how do I explain it like when I'm drawing eyes simply like a sharper eye tends to have like a more cattier uh sassier a uh, more meaner glare to it or like confident glare as opposed to like rounder more like bunny shaped eyes that have a more innocent and like cute appeal to it 
So like in this drawing, I'm using a more like angled eye shape, angular face, sharper hair pieces, and just like everything is very like rigid for an edgier look to it. But yeah, I think that was really interesting because shape design has a lot to do with interpretation of certain characters. I'm trying to think of a character that I can reference. I just keep thinking of SpongeBob. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Incredible. Yeah, for like such a intimidatingly, like his physique being so intimidating and so large, it still has that like round softness to it in his design and his like face, where it's not even like a perfectly cut rectangle, like jaw and face. It's still like, he still embodies the personality of like a father of like all those kids without compromising his super human physique. So with that roundness and like softness, even to his like ginormous muscles, it definitely softens his character design and like approach or like first impression of him. Especially like his color palette's really iconic too, like the red, black, and yellow. I'm trying to think of who else, like Crimson Chin from like Timmy Turner from like the early Nickelodeon show. He has like that like sharp, iconic, like comic style style to him, which just like gives this bravado of like being this really strong and renowned superhero in that world. And very stylized. Uh, silhouette too. I don't have a picture of the chin guy, but he has like a, it's, a, it's actually a similar profile to Mr. Incredible where he has like really broad shoulders, a tiny little itty bitty waist, really buff legs, but like they're still like narrow. So it's like all pointing in a triangle. I feel like the triangle shape is very like, it's the common theme when it comes to designing superheroes or like wanting that superhero physique like you see it in captain america's like just torso in general where they want that dorito shape thank you i think for the face here I was deciding on whether I wanted like a, a scar on his face, like a bruise or like a band-aid. I just wanted him to kind of have like a punchable face to add to like his uh, kind of theme of this like edgy punk. I think facial expression wise too, I want to keep to that theme. Because again, like if the facial expression was different when it comes to details like that, it would have, it could have been a very different interpretation of what his personality would be like. And I think personality and their storytelling in characters is really important too. Like from the way they're standing again, uh, just their facial expression has a lot to do with it. I'm so sorry if this question was already asked. What art supplies or materials do you recommend for beginner artists? Mm, I guess it also depends on what drawing style you want to get into. Um, but honestly, like, I just started with, like, pencils. Like, literally anything I had on hand. Um, if I, if when I started getting into, like, painting, I got this, like, tiny pocket uh pocket-sized watercolor kit by um 
I want to say Pentel, but I'm so sure that's not it. But there's a lot of cheap alternatives that like I would just use just to see if I like the medium and like kind of get my basic understanding of how to use these down before my purchase of more expensive and like quality products. But personally, starting in pencil and pen, like I think that's all you really need. Unless you want to get into digital art, there's always like cheap pen tablets, uh, like without the screens that are like Wacom ones where the Pro Intuoses are good, but those are a little expensive. So like Huon, XP pen, those are good digital display or pen displays, pen tablets, not display. I'm a liar, but yeah. I remember like I used to like be so obsessed with like before I really got into digital art I just wanted like all these Copic markers um and like alcoholic pens Copic markers are those like really expensive alcohol pens that blend really nicely but digital art is so much easier <laughs> it's so much easier and so much more convenient for me personally that I find myself drawing digitally like most of my time but if I'm drawing traditionally, I like this like cheap Himi gouache kit that isn't like really like good quality gouache, but it, it gets the job done. And gouache is this like paint, uh, what is it like? Paint tube, paint uh, material that is like similar to acrylic but it resets with water really easily um and it's really easy to like use so it's either like that that's a good kit that's pretty cheap too himi gouache or just like basic brush pens that i got in from like pentel i got this like nice fountain pen for like 20 dollars i like muji when, if I want to draw with fountain pens, things like that. But you really don't need a lot to get into art, I think, depending on what you want to do, of course. Also for this one, I just wanted to focus on the face. So I did a ton of detailing on the face and generally that's what I like to draw the most. So this is actually really fun to draw. What do I generally do to get over art block? Uh, I practice drawing um, like life drawing or not life drawing, I guess. I get reference images of like models and poses or for me, like famous celebrities with really cool fashion and I just draw them in my own styles and like maybe it get into my head a bit. Uh, but usually I just practice drawing like anatomy or like dynamic poses through like whether it's Pinterest or like Instagram images that are usually on my discover page because that's what I tend to follow or like a lot. Oh, sorry. But yeah, for me, if I have to get over art block, I just have to force myself to draw literally anything. Most of the time I hate it. Like I hate everything I draw in that moment, but sometimes I get into a group. But usually, again, like drawing from references is my go-to. I've been trying to get more into like fashion or like even fashion icons because there's so many interesting silhouettes and design choices even in fashion that I just try to like draw and copy 
that really helps me kind of get back into not hating art or anything I draw again. I also like to just look at art from artists I really like. Who are some of your favorite artists? Some of my favorite artists. Um, let me let me pull up in my reference images to like quickly take a break real quick. Right now, it's these artists. Um, Art of Six Six K. They have been like primarily drawing like these they're like original characters like this but they have like really gorgeous like compositions of like just water in general i don't know how to draw water like that it's like i feel like i can drink it straight from my screens um these artists nvp um they've gotten really popular because of like their fan art of like this popular anime called attack on titan and their drawings are so gorgeous like it's just like crazy detail crazy colors perspective just everything is amazing um uh and then song mumu here and antique white tang these are two korean artists that are really good at just everything uh and they've been my primary my my go-to when i'm kind of stuck in an art block uh and uh arowana art but yeah, these are these are the people that I usually always go to because I have like a saved folder of art that I love, either for like inspiration or reference. But yeah. But there's so many people and like there's so many um, names that typically have like a ton of numbers and underscores in it that I don't always remember all the artists I like so I just have to like go back to my save files what I also really like about digital art is like I get to flip my canvas a lot easier and get a different perspective of my drawing and fix kind of imbalances or like unwanted asymmetry in my drawings Cause if I'm like traditionally drawing, I have to like take a break before I look at my drawing again, or like I flip it upside down, uh, things like that. Do you have any tips for drawing clothing? Tips for drawing clothing? I just practice drawing different fabrics a lot and different textures. I think when it comes to like metal, oh, sorry again. Metal textures have a lot more harsher edges. When it comes to fabric, it depends on what fabric it is. For this one, I was trying to draw leather, but again, it kind of turned out more like thick flannel-y texture. But when it's like softer clothes, again, I'm thinking like softer edges and it blurs more. 
but I also don't want to compromise my harsh shading because then like I lose my creases and my folds. So kind of practicing different textures, honestly, like I just take note, like I focus a lot on the way the light is hitting the clothes and what kind of shading it is, if that makes sense. Like whether it's harsh, solid, blocked out shadows or if there's more movement and like more blurring of edges into one another and also when it comes to clothing it's like how thick is the material if it's really sheer then you might get the color of skin kind of interacting with the color of the sheer clothing and blurring through if it's like really thin and silky material then the folds will lie differently um for this one the folds are like a little thicker uh and shinier because it's a supposed to be the kind of like a leather jacket so if it's like a t-shirt or like a silk shirt there's gonna be thinner and more folds so i'm thinking like clothes thickness and thinness and fabric texturing I think I wanted to shade the t-shirt underneath, but I also just kind of wanted it to bleed out into the rest of the drawing, like the, the canvas color. I also didn't want too much like noise happening and losing focus of like the main focus of like his face. Do you prefer to draw in black and white? And if so, why? Um, yeah. For me, it's like the easiest. Uh, it helps me understand values a lot easier too. For colors, color theory is hard. There's just a lot that I'm considering when I'm using colors. Not that I'm not thinking when I'm using grayscale, but for grayscale, I'm not thinking of color theory and the interaction of different colors and grays on a palette um but usually if i'm doing a like, character design again like i'm trying to think of like three to four basic flat colors to kind of symbolize this character's design like again with like the incredibles his color palette is like red black and yellow i would try to kind of think of that theme but grayscale is just easier because i don't have to think of everything like that all the like oh like this blue is actually too washed out this gray doesn't look kind of gray it's kind of too warm for this palette uh things like that but grayscale has its advantages for me personally because besides convenience and time saving it's just i kind of get myself down to the basics and under like practice rendering and shading and blocking out things. And I get into a flow of it a lot easier. I think it's also because like when I started drawing, I for some reason only made myself draw with like pencil and ink. And I just like never wanted to use any color because it was like super intimidating, but I've actually really been like loving color recently because you can tell so much from an image with color and its vibrancy and I can do so much with it that I can't necessarily reciprocate with grayscale because if I have a really colorful image and I wash it out to just gray it's completely different and the values of colors may be the same but they're not in color 
obviously. So it has its pros and cons, but usually for like sketches or like simple drawings like this, uh, grayscale is definitely the easiest. This one, I'm trying to separate the values on the jacket more because I just didn't like how the lighting was. Like, I felt like the reflections of light just weren't bouncing correctly for me. So I was trying to have more uh, diffusion between edges. So in that sense, I really like using grayscale for this one because if I was using color, then it would have taken me forever. Here, when I'm rendering, I was seeing if I changed the curve of the its tones for this layer, if I liked it any less, but I just decided to go back to my normal one. I just basically zoomed out and like kept flipping the canvas to make sure I just like the details were right and it didn't look wonky. And then I put all the layers together with the line art layer. So it was just like all one layer. Usually I keep the line art, for my style at least, I keep the line art separate. Um, and then I do like a base flat color underneath and then I do shading on top of it, on top of the color layer, which is like those two, like the base color and then the shading and lighting is still underneath the line art layer. And then I on top of my line art, then I get into more detailing and coloring where I color over the line art. Not all of it, but it's kind of like a guideline. And then I combine it for a more final composite of it. Do you have any tips on how to draw hair? Um, for hair, I think the way you're drawing highlights and shading it is really important. What helps a lot is finding where the root would be. So earlier when I drew like his circle for his skull shape and then the line down, um, and then I drew like his hairline and then like where his hair was splitting. So like the root of where everything was like happening. And then I just drew from that starting point and then stylized it. And that helps me kind of get the shape more natural and more realistic. And then when it comes to coloring it, you know, it's like darker at the roots. And then like the middles have this like almost like lightning banded shape of highlight to it. And then like I fill it in with like mid-tones and then wherever there's like parting or like chunks and like gapping of hair, I have like darker edges to it. To kind of separate it from other pieces so it's not like one like Lego helmet kind of look. I think of it as like kind of chunks of hair not like hair pieces because like then I would like want to draw it with like individual lines and that would just look that would be a different style and it would also like because of all that detailing my eyes would kind of be drawn to the hair and I wanted to focus on the face so like I just don't want too much detail I want it more locked in so I use, I typically use like a bigger brush to force myself to not focus on details for hair. Uh, can you explain how you're constructing the body in the video? Yes. Uh, so for this one, again, I like to warm up with a guy because it's easier for me to draw. And then I was like, okay, now I'm going to draw a woman. And I kind of wanted to have this like, again, like I want a shift of body position 
to have it be at least a little bit more dynamic and again it's what i was mentioning earlier where i can kind of tell how someone carries themselves through it so i wanted more personality to it i wanted a little bit more attitude into it so i had like the shift of the shoulders which obviously shift the hips and i wanted more like curvature to her body to not emphasize not only emphasize like her body shape and like body line but later her design as it like shifts down so you could like look from top to bottom and it has like a flow to it and so for this one i'm using like basically like spheres and boxes to help me just plan it out in like a in a more grid line kind of format like using my cylinders using my cubes i start with a head always um and then i go from like head down but I like to get the rib cage in, figure out how the flow is gonna go. So I just like, it was really quick and you missed, probably missed it because like, I'm just like control Z is my best friend here. I just did like a line to figure out what kind of flow I want. Um, and sometimes it takes me a couple different poses until I figure out one I like. Um, but I was using, I just wanted more flow to a basic standing position. For this one, I, in like my Instagram feeds and my Pinterest, again, love those, <laughs> love those websites. I've been getting a lot of like really beautifully constructed like prosthetics. Uh, and I wanted to kind of incorporate that into like my own character where it has this more like technological or like cyberpunk, but also just realistic kind of edge to it so I wanted to have like the focus be on her leg so I was just focusing on more of like a curvature and line of this character pose so you kind of naturally look down to her design leg I was like trying to balance between both modern and like really stylized designs and it's actually really fun trying this one. I don't want to do too much because I wanted to get into the details on top of the layer so this is just like a quick sketch. And for some reason um this like image i saw it was like a prosthetic leg it had like flowers on it it's like a metal steel type leg and it was just so pretty and i was like that would be so cool on a character so i kind of wanted this heart theme and this like feminine touch to her character but also like a, a toughness to her so i kind of designed her like really athletic build kind of thing and later on a character design like more of like a how do i explain it just like a really cool woman Here, I just wanted this sketch on a different layer so I can draw over it because I want to lighten this up. This one, I didn't use a round brush. I actually wanted um, a more harsher edge to it, almost like a earlier... games where like the styles are like just harsh lines and solid black shading so i didn't really have like what is it like 
a painted kind of style to it. It was just almost like comic-like. Did you take art classes to learn how to draw or was it more self-taught? It was more self-taught. I actually never took an art class. Actually, I'm a liar. I took one art class, I think, sophomore year of high school um, for like the art elective. <laughs> but before that, I was already drawing. Uh, but it's been self-taught. Thankfully, YouTube has been a great resource for me. Um, and a lot of the artists I like tend to stream their art processes or like have speed drawings or speed paintings already uploaded. So I would just watch those like anytime I could, whether it was like in the morning going to school during between classes, like at night. And again, like those ugh, watching speed paints really get me out of an art blog. So I would watch those and I just would just keep drawing. And I just drew a lot of guys in the beginning because like that was like my comfort zone. But then because of like more exposure to different artists and art styles, I was wanting to draw just different body types and kind of different persons. I think it also helps because I'm just a homebody. So drawing is definitely was like my only option for a hobby. This one, I wanted like a kind of femme fatale look where she has like a femininity to her, uh, a cattiness to her design. Uh, but I also wanted more, what is it like independence or like, I guess strength. I'm trying to think of like a better word that's the opposite of fragility, but like, uh, just uh yeah i guess i'll just use strength to her personality that i'm drawing here despite like more feminine kind of characteristics of like these hard designs and like this like short dress tight fitting dress with these like stockings Do you have any tips on how to get better at drawing hands? Um, I think ba breaking everything down into basic geometrical shapes helps a lot. Um, thinking of hands as like, how to explain it? Like this very thin rectangular shape. It's hard to explain without actually drawing it, <laughs> but thinking it, of it in geometrical shapes like that's what i do when i'm drawing bodies it's the same thing where it's i'm either using cubes or spheres or cylinders to draw limbs like the hand for me is just like this rectangle or cube rectangular prism with cylinders coming from it um and i add the curvatures of like the muscles onto it later um definitely i did a lot of hand reference pictures and practices because I think the flexibilities of like the joints can be really hard to capture. So I typically like to just group them into like almost like having like four fingers where I just like group the middle finger and the ring finger together in like drafts or just like have little like rectangles when I'm doing sketches to be like, that's going to be a hand later. But getting the basic structures of them down into really simplified shapes helps before approaching them in a more specific and detailed kind of drawing. Do you have any tips on getting body proportions right? Mm, drawing from life is my best go-to. I think if I'm referencing like a stylized drawing that's cartoonish or definitely has a style to it it's not gonna be a sure way for me to tell if the proportions are right because I can't like it's stylized like it it's not gonna be rooted in realism as much as a literal figure model would be 
So using reference images of like models and really dynamic poses or just like straight up shots of them standing and seeing how like uh, the body lies. Like what I do a lot is like I look at body parts um, in relation to one another. So like for elbows, I'm like thinking, oh, it's going to be like near the middle, like near their solar plexus of their rib cage. Um, so I'm always thinking of body parts re in relation to one another because that helps me kind of puzzle piece it together a lot easier. And then at the end, of course, like what's important is like I'm not microscoping into one specific area before I start detailing it. Like if I'm doing a sketch, I'm like zoomed all the way out and then like I fix it as I go, like as I as I continue sketching it because I don't want to start drawing, like coloring it or like f doing details on it if the proportions aren't right because that's going to be really tough to fix later on. Yeah, definitely practicing from reference is really important. What kind of media would you like to see your art in? Do you have any future goals in terms of art? What kind of media? Like media as in like film, animation, graphic novel kind of media or like social media? Um, I guess I would like to see my art in like social media standards where it's just drawing and then you upload it onto a platform or like maybe in the future when I have an idea for a story like a graphic novel setting uh, like webtoons or manga kind of styles do I have and for future goals I guess those would be my goals to have more pieces to upload and come up with a story and a set of characters that I like find compelling enough to create a story out of. But I definitely want to get better at landscapes. <laughs> if it's like a really specific detail, like landscape drawings and paintings, I want to get better at, especially when it comes to traditional paintings. Because I definitely have my own safety bubble of art and it's like drawing people or characters. For her hair, I wanted more like sharp hair pieces pointing out. I wanted, again, femme fatale. I'm thinking like chic. I have like keywords in my head um, <laughs> to kind of wrap this character design around. For the prosthetic, I also wanted more detail in the prosthetic, again, to capture more focus on it. So I kind of wanted it to be shiny metal, just like the reference I was using. And drawing metal in this like style is a lot easier because like, just harsh edges is all you need to focus for metal textures. Sorry, my dog wants to go play. For the other leg, I was thinking about putting a stocking on it, but I kind of wanted her to like have pockets because I don't think her dress had pockets. So like, okay, let me just give her like a pouch that she could put, I don't know, like weapons and tools and 
to kind of give her a more like dangerous appeal almost What websites do you find references on? Um, my primary social media websites like Instagram, uh, Pinterest. Pinterest is great because you just get so many. You just get a mood board of everything you like, and everything I like on it is art related. So I get cool fashion ideas. Um, photography. I follow a lot of photographers. Um, Instagram. I just have different save files. I like to be organized with my things, so I just have art files on Instagram. Um, a ton of saved moods on Pinterest, Twitter. I follow a ton of artists. Um, but really, all I do is like, if I can't find a specific thing on Pinterest on or Instagram, which is usually unlikely, unless I'm like looking for a specific. Pose, then it's Google. Like I just Google, but primary, my primary choices are Instagram and Twitter. Actually, Instagram and Pinterest. Everything else is like ideas of already existing pop culture figures or characters that I really like, and I kind of take influence from. Like whether it's anime characters or movie characters, uh, things like that. So this, let me. This is the completed drawing. I just had to like get a basic idea for character design put down, and uh, which is why there's not like different drafts of it. Because usually there would be different drafts of like a, like one single character, different poses, etc. Uh, the next part of the video is just basically me uh, composing like an image from another image like Reno Tuna and KSK that I was referring to earlier in their different styles and seeing what I could do. Um, I think I definitely could have pushed more creative bounds on this instead of just thinking basic armor, but it was really fun. It's a fun little project. I didn't get to finish these pieces, but it's just my basic process. This one is definitely more fantastical, uh, medieval-y, I don't know, has a more otherworldly kind of style, N not rooted in modern world kind of things. For bigger paintings, digital paintings, I like to usually use two to three brushes for textures. Uh, like the round brush, one solid edge brush, and then one solid edge brush that can blend. So I can get different harsh shadows, lightings, blurring as well. And then if I'm really rendering a piece towards the end, I use like textured brushes to add more texture to the paintings. Would you rather pe recommend people try anthropomorphizing? <laughs> Sorry, I read that wrong. Objects and creatures as an exercise. Do you feel doing this has helped with thinking outside the box for design? I highly recommend it. It's a super fun exercise. It definitely pushes me to have a little more creativity, whether or not it can even I can even say it's creative or not. Uh, for this one, I think I definitely again could have pushed it more, but. 
it's very fun and you have a reference right there which is a good exercise itself to refer back to um and it kind of i don't know how to explain it like putting yourself in a box for me helps me be more creative than having the option of like just coming up with like my own idea or just having nothing to start off on because this at least gets the ball rolling because it's not like any of my ideas are going to be 100 like my idea is definitely going to be rooted in some other inference that i had from my own experience so having these kind of objects really kind of just gets me started on putting something down on the paper at least what aspects of the original reference here are you using to inspire the character no you're good <laughs> ask me as many questions as you like uh for this one i basically just looked through pinterest for like pretty objects um like old lamps i don't know why i was just really in like a vintage lamp <laughs> obsession and this really pretty one came out and i was like oh my gosh this looks like a piece of armor someone would wear um and i was seeing how i could like incorporate that onto a person it's super basic super easy to kind of go off of because it's already so like armor like already in its shape um but it was fun trying to come up with like character design being around it um but like the color palette was laid out for me with its like earth like beige silvery tones and like that accent of red which i really liked But yeah fun exercise and it kind of just like makes you focus on the the details of the reference and interpreting them in ways that you wouldn't have even looked at to begin with i think what would be interesting is trying to turn this object into another object i guess using similar themes of it that doesn't have to be necessarily a person but I'm trying to think of ways i could do that but yeah i like it a lot this really pushes creative brown bounds for me at least for this one i had a difficult time like having the big picture of it and kind of deciding between a style um for the guy and you can kind of see me fidgeting with like if i want to draw over the lines or like which one i'm am i doing like am i doing a more painted style or like a more animated simple style For this lamp, I was trying to like figure out how I could fit this onto a person and like the legs of the lamp. I was like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I don't want to, should that be the legs of the person? I guess you could do quite literally anything with that, but I just turned them into like stylized like strips, tassels almost. Um, but yeah, I think in the future when i'm like working on this more i'm gonna add more te fabric texturing to it besides it just being like a jumpsuit underneath uh things like that if you could be an art medium which would it be it would be digital it's just super super convenient no hassle uh it's such a smooth working process compared to like my process in traditional art it's like all or nothing. I don't know why. I get into like such a crazy mind headspace where I'm like, oh my gosh, like if I make an error in like this painting or like ink drawing, it's unfixable, which makes me be a little more patient with my lines, which I definitely could use in my digital art because I'm honestly using my backspace, kind of my redo button, undo button as like a crutch. But yeah, I just prefer digital art. I would I would love to be digital art. 
Like digital art is just here to have a good time. I was definitely hitting a wall for this one. I was definitely hitting art blog with this uh, hair and just like character here. So I was just like trying to work on the face because that's what I have fun with. That's another way to get out of art block for me, just drawing things that I like to draw, even if I've drawn them like a million times, uh, gets me out of that headspace. I was just trying different things, different coloring things. Uh, and seeing what I could do. Usually hair is really fun for me to draw, but for some reason I was like struggling. I was struggling really hard. <laughs> Typically, if I'm having a really tough time drawing something, again, references. References get me out of art blocks and art difficulties. Time check, 8.55. Yeah, I think there's two minutes left. But yeah, that is basically my art process when it comes to these. I think what I definitely learned from this one was like taking more of a step back and definitely not zooming in early. I want to zoom out and just get the basic foundation of the drawing down, whether it's design and pose and like colors before I get into the minute details. But overall, it was a fun project. But yeah, that was my drawing process. Thank you for so being so patient with me throughout that. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember if... But yeah, there's a lot you can do with character concepts. This is just like a little introduction of it. Um, color palette, silhouette cultural aspects can really imply for a special like especially regarding more rooted designs and realism styles uh but there's a lot you can do depending on what you want to accomplish and what your story is well i thank you Kit jenny that that was very interesting it's yeah thank you so much how, how you're working um, and I would like to remind everyone that actually Jenny will be coming on board to teach in the fall, a character design course and also a manga coloring class. There's two separate classes. One will be on a Saturday and I think one's probably going to be on a Monday. So do check out the website for that. And the other thing is she has two one day workshops coming up um, in August. So I urge you to check those out. Um, and uh, again, one will be on manga coloring and one will be on character design. So um, there's still time to register if anyone's interested. So I would like to thank you very much, Jenny. Um, it was a very interesting demonstration. Um, and just to let you know, our next lecture will be in July and it will be a lecture on children's book illustration by another new instructor, that's Diana O'Brien, who will also be teaching in the fall. And I should also like to remind you about, our, again, about the summer workshops. I mean, there's still time to register. We have a variety of things on offer. So please check out the website, atelierflowerfield.org. And uh, please look out for our emails about other lectures and exhibitions and other upcoming events uh, and classes. So thank you very much and good night. Yeah, thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>